Welcome to the Story A Day podcast. This is Julie Duffy from storyaday.org, encouraging you to be a writer every day, not someday. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Julie from Story A Day here. As I record this, it's Christmas Eve. I'm very excited because I'm a big kid and I know not everybody celebrates Christmas, but I do and I love it. And the advantage of getting older is that I'm getting sillier and more comfortable with that. I've got lots of nostalgia, so I've got lots to draw on. And the best part for me is that I have a partner in crime who is equally excited about Christmas and we just have a lot of fun with it. So even as our kids got less willing to have fun with us, that was okay because we had each other to make all the foods with and buy the silly presents with and just get excited and be childlike (laughs) with, which is a gift in itself. But here's the reason I'm telling you this, not just because I want you to know that I am having a nice day, but because that idea of having a partner in crime is so helpful in life And it doesn't have to be a romantic partner. It doesn't have to be a life partner. In fact, what I've discovered over the past few years, five years, 10 years, is that surrounding yourself with a community of people who approach the important things in life the same way is hugely important to having a good time as we go through this journey. And by this journey, I mean everything from life to your writing. And the good news is that it has become a lot easier to find those communities. I first got online in 1993. My university was one of those universities that had a robust computer science department back in the day was when most people didn't know what that was. And it actually implemented an email system for students. And because I lived with scientists, I found out about this a lot sooner than most of my friends in the humanities and arts and social sciences. So I actually had an email account back in 1993. Of course, the only people I could email back then were my flatmates. So they were the only other people I knew who had email addresses. But it was fun. We would email each other and then we would rush home in the evening and go, did you get my email? It was so exciting having these instantaneous messages because Before that, all you could do was post something to people and it would take at least a day to get there. Then in 1996, I got my first computer at home and we hooked it up to the internet and we discovered that there was this web out there. This World Wide Web was starting and writers were some of the first people to get online, especially science fiction writers, but also literary writers. And my very first writing group ever in my life was an online group in 1996. It was called the Local Writers Workshop. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Noah, if you're out there. Some of the stuff that I learned there, I still use at Story A Day. For example, when we do our critique week, it's very much structured the way that the Local Writers Workshop structured it in that you have to critique other people's work in order to participate, which just raises the stakes a little bit for everybody in terms of civility you're still looking for really helpful feedback to give people, but you know that they're going to be critiquing your work too. So it just encourages you to remember that there's a real person on the other end of the critique. That was my introduction to the world, the online world. And somewhat naively, I've always retained that. I think that people with very little encouragement can be encouraged to act in a civil way. It's not something that people talk a lot about with online communities these days, but it's actually not that hard to implement if you set the tone. Therefore, there are online communities where you can find your your people. I've worked quite hard over the past five or six years to create that in the Story A Day community. The comments that come in on the monthly swagger posts, and if you're not taking part in those, that's the first part of the first day of the month. I put a post up at the site storyaday.org where you can set your goals for the month and just have that there as a bit of accountability for yourself. 
And yeah, it's a pretty small community in terms of it's it's a pretty small community compared to something like Twitter or Facebook. And maybe that's why it's civil. But I also like to think that it's civil because nobody is uncivil and it does that's it's not encouraged. So you can come there and you can post your goals for the month and people will say, that's great or "Ooh, that sounds ambitious or whatever. But it's a way of you publicly saying what you're going to be working on this coming month. I really encourage you to come over on January the 1st to storyaday.org and do that thing. Don't You don't need to set your goals for the year. You don't need to set a big goal. Just something that will keep you connected to your writing. So finding a good community to hang out with is easier than ever. It's getting a little harder to find it just on random social media sites, but I think that's why you're listening to this podcast. I think that's why you are spending time looking and taking writing classes and finding communities online of other writers is a really great way to keep yourself connected to your writing. It works for everything. It's why people join gyms. It's why people join churches. You keep yourself aligned to your spiritual practices. And it's very easy to fall away from any kind of practice if you don't have a community that's holding you to it. And speaking of January the 1st, you'll have heard me say this before, but you don't need to start the year off with a big bang. You don't need to set all kinds of resolutions. And As the person who runs the Story A Day May Challenge, I do have occasional times in the year where I encourage you to push yourself. But I've also learned over the, what is it now, 13 years of running the challenge, that that kind of pace is not sustainable. So I do encourage people to set really tiny goals for the rest of the the year, every day, just something that connects you to your writing, not even every day, just often enough to keep you connected to your writing. So don't feel that you need to, A, make massive January New Year's resolutions, And certainly don't feel that you need to start them on January the 1st. Here's one of the other gifts of getting older. I've realised that I can do what I like pretty much with this stuff. Now, some people find it very motivating to create a streak and that's fine. But remember, you don't have to start it on January the 1st. In fact, as creative people, I think we thrive a little on that rebellious, I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to do it differently. I'm going, I'm not going to do what you tell me. I'm going to do it myself. And so if you, if that appeals to you, if you're smiling a little bit right now, let's agree not to start anything new on January the 1st. It'll be our secret. And in fact, I'm going to have something for you that starts a little later in January, just a little challenge to get you started on the year on your own terms. So stay tuned for that and keep an eye on your email inbox because I will be getting getting in touch with you about that. Now, part of the reason it's not starting on January 1st is I genuinely do think that sometimes these big dates set up big expectations that are almost impossible to live up to. So there's a, there's a solid psychological reason for me doing a, a challenge that starts a little later in the month and just a tiny little challenge, I'll tell you, which I will tell you more about later. But honestly, some of it is that I don't want to work between Christmas and New Year. And I really like New Year too, because I'm Scottish and we have a whole other word for New Year, which is Hogmanay. It's a big deal for us. So uh, I'm not I'm not really working right now. I'm taking a break. I'm doing lots of reading. I am uh, spending time with my family and I'm not starting January the 1st with a bang. Part of it is me justifying my own sloth and my own rhythms. And part of it is me encouraging you to think about your own rhythms and to be that little bit rebellious because that's what we creative people do. If you are not setting New Year's resolutions, if you haven't done your goals for next year yet, if you are tuning out all of this end of year, all of these reading lists that you need to read, I was going to do that and I thought, I don't want to, so I didn't. Hey, here's me encouraging you to think about the things that you don't want to do and not do them. This is me encouraging you to think about all of the things that people make you feel like you ought to be doing and think about whether or not you need to be doing them. Chances are you don't. There are some things that you can be doing for the greater good, sure, 
But as we get pulled back into more and more of life outside our own four walls and other people's expectations, I want you to hold on to some of the stuff you learned over the pandemic. I want you to hold on to some of the ways you let go of things and looked inside. And sometimes when we withdraw from the world, we find out what's really essential. There were things we missed and there were things we didn't miss. Let's think carefully as we go into the new year about the things that we want to add back into our lives that we didn't actually miss and how can we get out of them. One of the ways you can get out of them is by surrounding yourself with a community of like-minded people. So again, watch your inbox in January because I'm going to be inviting you to take part in a teeny tiny challenge that will allow you to be part of something that is full of people who want to be writing and who value creativity. Another thing I rebelled about was something I probably should have done, which is put together a year's best list of stuff. But I've been blogging throughout the year. I've been podcasting and I decided that (laughs) rather than, than do a whole bunch of work right now, Again, I want to keep time for my writing. I want to keep time for my family. So I'm going to just going to refer you to a bunch of stuff that you might find interesting if you've got some downtime over this next couple of weeks. So there is a list of interviews that I've done on the podcast, which I will link you to. If you would like to find out what I've been reading in terms of short stories and enjoying you can go to the blog and look for the reading room posts. Again, I will link to that in the show notes. If you noticed that I was putting out a lot of courses and workshops and eBooks and options for you to invest in your writing this year, you're right, but you might've been really busy when I was doing that. So I've put everything on the shop page at storyaday, storyaday.org forward slash shop. Again, I'll link in the notes. And everything is there from ebooks to courses to standalone workshops. Pretty much everything that's available is on that page. So if you've got some downtime and you want to take anything from a 90 minute workshop to a three day mini course to a do it yourself six week deep dive into short storytelling, it's all there for you. And you can go and have a look at that. Like you, I will be scouring all of the blogs for the end of year reading lists and trying to decide which books to look at. I want to encourage you to remember that your tastes are your taste and building up your own personal canon of literature that inspires you, enrages you, comforts you. That is more important than thinking that you need to read all the books that are on the book club lists or that other people say are worthy or that are winning prizes. As a writer, yeah, you should read some of that stuff, I think. Some of the, you should know everything that's out there, but don't neglect the opportunity to read stuff that really excites you. If that's romance, if that's cosy mysteries, if that's something that gets looked down upon by other people, don't let that stop you. You got into this gig because somebody was writing something that lit you up. Remember that there's someone out there reading your writing who is saying the same thing because your brain is unique. I'll be back maybe next week, maybe the week after, but hopefully next week with with an interview with a wonderful writer called Gwen E. Kirby. I always love having writers on the podcast because we can just talk about what it's like to be a writer and what their process is like, how they develop ideas from premise to story, a little bit about the business. And I think it just encourages all of us to remember that everyone is struggling with this writing stuff and everyone has insecurities and even people who are having some success, they're just like you and me. Tune back in for that podcast when it is available. Meantime, there's lots of links for you in the notes. I'm off to enjoy my Christmas. There's lots of cake. There's a pudding we're going to set on fire. I'll be making a trifle at some point. There will be shortbread at New Year because I am Scottish and that is a law, which I will be making from my mother's secret recipe, which I'm not sure is that secret. Anyway, I am planning on having a lovely break week here. I hope that you are planning some downtime. I hope that you're planning some reading. I hope that you are finding the people you need to find who keep you aligned to your writing and help you to be more you, the writer that is you. 
Thank you for being with me for however much of this year you've been with me. If you've just discovered Story A Day, welcome. We've got lots of good stuff in store for you next year. If you've been with me since the very beginning, and I know there are people who've been here since um, May of 2010, thank you. I really appreciate you being here. I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for you. I look forward to hanging out with you more in the coming year and years. And let's do this thing. Let's keep writing. If you'd like to be writing more, consider subscribing to the Story A Week newsletter. Not just any old writing prompts. These email lessons take an aspect of creative writing each week and show you how to build that skill as you write a story focused on it. Showing up in your inbox weekly means you're never more than seven days away from your next reminder to dive back into the writing that makes you the person you want to be. Find out more at storyaday.org forward slash story a week. Thanks for listening. Why not come over to the blog at storyaday.org and check out this week's writing prompts and articles. And in the meantime, have a great creative week. And of course, keep writing.